All right, we got a new unit starting today, um, inequalities. Um, inequalities are, we've discussed them before earlier in the year, um, but inequalities are when you have greater than or less than signs. Um, so anytime you're comparing uh, to most of the time two things, I guess you compare it more than that, but most of the time it's just comparing two things. So just one definition, an inequality is a mathematical sentence that compares expressions. All right, and we'll be using the signs that you're familiar with. And then we have some new ones that you might not be as familiar with, but you will be. Okay, so inequalities is just when you're comparing two things. You're saying one thing is bigger than the other thing or one thing is less than the other thing. Um, so our signs are we've got greater than less than move this up um, you obviously know equal to uh, I don't feel like I need to write that one um, this one might be new for you this is greater than or equal to then we have less than or equal to. And then obviously we've got this one that is not equal. Okay, so these two, like I said, should be familiar to you. Um, a lot of people get confused, like they think you have to have numbers to know what the sign is, but this sign, there's no numbers around and this sign is the greater than sign, okay? The big side is facing this way that's the greater than sign, okay? What I always like to think about is the less than sign, it looks like an L, okay? This right here doesn't look like an L. That's the greater than sign, but this one right here looks like an L, so that's the less than sign. These two right here might be new for you this year. Um, the only difference is you'll notice they have a line underneath them, and we're gonna be practicing a lot with these. But all they mean is that the number that you're comparing can be greater to that number or it can be equal to it. Okay, that probably doesn't make much sense right now, but I promise you that it will. Um, but it's kind of like saying, hey, it can be equal to this or it can be more. This one is saying it can be equal to that number or it can be less than that number. Okay, so um, another thing I want to show you, and once again, it won't make too much sense right now, but once you see what we're doing today, it'll make a lot more sense. Um, if you have a circle that is filled in, like a dark circle, number is included in the solution set. Okay, if you just have an open circle that's not filled in, number is not included in the solution set. All right, and solution set is just a fancy way of saying the answers, okay? Solution is another word for answer. Um, so it's saying that it could be a possible, this one is saying it could be an answer, this one is saying it's not gonna be an answer. Um, it, it cannot be included in the list of numbers, that's the answer. Now what's tricky about inequalities is like when I say that something is greater than this, there's lots of options that the answers could be. It's like if I say that X is greater than five, there's millions of possibilities that X could be. As long as it's bigger than five, that's all that matters. Um, whereas when you do an, an equation, it just straight, straight up says X equals five. Five is the only thing that's gonna work, okay? So inequalities are a little bit different that you can have lots and lots of answers. Um, because like I said, it, it kind of just depends on what your sign is saying. If your sign says X is less than three, 
then any number, whether it's two or whether it's negative 200, both of those are less than three, so both of those could be answers. Okay, so you have to pay attention to what the sign is, so that way you know what your possible answers could be. Okay, today we're going to be focused on graphing, um, and I don't mean like on like a coordinate plane. We're not doing that type of graphing. Um, this is just like a little number line um, that you can draw on your own. So that's what we're focused on today. We'll practice with it more tomorrow, but we're going to add something to it tomorrow. So we do some quick examples. All right, so if I tell you x is greater than 9. All right, if we were in class together, I would ask you to give me some possible answers that x could be. Hopefully you'd be yelling out 9. I'm oh, sorry. Hopefully you'd be yelling out 10, 12, 15, 36, 149. All of those could be x because as long as it's bigger than 9, that's all that matters. You could even say 9.1, okay, because 9.1 is bigger than 9. Any of those answers could work. So the way that we show that is this is the number line I was talking about. All right, the number they're talking about, so 9, we're going to put that in the middle. All right, and then you go one above and one below, and that's all you need. All right, now remember I told you this right here. This has to do with graphing, okay? So 9 cannot be an answer. All right, it says x has to be greater than 9. It cannot be equal to 9. So that tells me that my circle right here has to be open because 9 cannot be included as an answer. All right, it says x is greater than 9. So you can't have 9 right here because it would be 9 is greater than 9, which is not true, okay? So it has to be anything bigger than 9. So we have an open circle right here, okay, because 9 can't be an answer. But anything bigger than 9 could be an answer. So what we do is we shade our number line going this way because all the answers going that way could be an answer for x. Okay, so you're shading in the direction that all the answers could be. I'm not going to shade this way because either the numbers that are less than 9. Less than 9 is not going to be an answer for x. It has to be greater than 9, so it's going to be everything going this way. Now, it doesn't mean that it's just 10, all right? Notice how I included coloring in the arrow at the end because I'm showing you that everything else going this direction could be an answer. So even if it's way down here at 56, that's still an answer that could work for x. Because if you plug in 56 right here, 56 is greater than 9, so it would work out. All right, let's look at another one. x is less than or equal to 15. I'm going to go ahead and draw my number line. Remember, the number that they're talking about goes in the middle. Then you have one below and one above. That's all you need. You don't need to draw out a 10-digit number line. You can if you want, but it's not necessary. All right. So this one says x is less than or equal to 15. Okay? So this is telling me that x can be equal to 15 or anything less than 15. The reason I know that it can include 15 is because it's got this line under it. And remember, we're going back up to the top. That sign was less than or equal to. So it can be less than 15 or it can be equal to 15. So this time, since it can be equal to 15, I'm going to have this circle right here because 15 can be included in my answer. So I'm going to color this one in. Okay? Once again, the reason I did that is because of this line right here. This line right here tells you that 15 can be an answer, so I need to color 15 in. All right? Up here, there was no line. Okay? So if there's no line, your circle's open. But if you have a line, your circle has to be closed, all right? Usually a lot of times what I say is, I'm using a pen, so that's why I'm saying the word ink. If you use extra ink to draw this line under here, then you have to use extra ink to color in your circle, okay? The only time your circle is going to be colored in is if there's a line underneath here, okay? It doesn't matter if it's less than or greater than. If there's a line underneath here, your circle has to be colored in, Okay? Now we just need to figure out which direction to shade my line. Am I going this way or this way? Well, it says that x is less than 15, okay? Which direction is less than 15? Is 16 less than 15 or is 14? Hopefully you're saying 14, so I'm going to shade this way. 
everything in this direction would work as an answer, okay? Not just 14, but everything less than that. So even if you keep going, going, going to negative 5, if I plug in a negative 5 right here, negative 5 is less than or equal to 15, so it would work. So anything in this direction would work as an answer. Now let me tell you a little trick, and sometimes I hesitate to say this trick because mm, it, you, have to, you have to be careful. When your variable is on the left-hand side, so when your variable is over here, you're going to shade your line whatever way your sign is pointing. So like, see how my sign is pointing to the right, and I shade it to the right. Well, here, my sign is pointing to the left, and I shade it to the left. So whichever way, think of this as like an arrow. Whatever way this is pointing, that's the way you're going to shade. Now, like I said, sometimes they try to trick you and put the variable over here. If the variable's over here, it doesn't work, all right? Your, your sign doesn't work. You have to know which way to go. But most of the time, your sign's going to be on this side, and you can just look to see which way that this little arrow is pointing. All right, let's try some more. Um, let's say y greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay, nothing's different even though it's negative. All right, so negative 2 is the one that's in the middle. Now you have to be careful with negatives because remember negatives are backwards. So negative 1 is over here and negative 3 is over here. So remember, negative 3 is actually smaller than negative 2. Okay, so just remember that. So I'm looking at my sign. I see it's got a line under it. If it's got a line under it, I know my circle has to be shaded in. So this is going to have to be a filled in circle. Okay, now it says y is greater than or equal to negative 2. So it has to be big numbers that are bigger than negative 2. And here's where you have to be careful because negatives sometimes confuse people. Remember, greater than negative 2. So I'm going to go this way because this way is the numbers that are bigger than negative 2. If I go this way, these numbers are smaller than negative 2. Negative 5, negative 6, negative 12, all of those are smaller than negative 2, so I cannot shade this way. I'm shading this way to all the positive numbers because those are the numbers that are going to work. Okay, But once again, since my variable is over here, I can just look and see which way this arrow is pointing. Since it's pointing to the right, I'm going to shade to the right. All right, try to squeeze in one more. Um, what if I said 6 greater than y? Okay, here's what I was talking about when they try to trick you, when they try to put the variable on the other side. We don't like that, okay? So anytime you see it like that, go ahead and switch it, okay? Go ahead and make your life much easier and switch this. You always want the variable to be on the left. So for right now, just take care of that part, and now we'll look at the sign. All right, well, if I switched my letter and number around, I also need to switch my sign around. So instead of going that way, I really want it to stay this way, okay? Now, technically, I didn't change anything because if you notice, the point is facing the Y here, and the point's still facing the Y here. But since I flipped the Y and the 6, I also had to flip the sign to make sure it stayed the same way. All right, so now I can draw my number line. 6 is in the middle. We're back to positive numbers. So we have 5 here, 7 here. Now, I don't see a line here. There's no line underneath my sign. So that tells me this circle has to be open. Okay? And since I fixed my letters so that my variable is on the left side, I can just look and see which way the arrow is pointing. This arrow is clearly pointing to the left. So that tells me that I need to shade everything going this way. Okay? But also, if you just know how to read this correctly, this says y is less than 6. Okay, well, which way are the numbers that are less than 6? 5 is the number that's less than 6. 7 is bigger than 6, so that's not going to help me out. So I need to look and see which numbers are less than 6. Okay, we're going to practice with this for a couple of days, so if you're confused, don't worry. Um, the biggest thing you need to take away is just making sure you understand when your circle is open or closed, okay? Anytime there's a line underneath your sign, your circle has to be closed. And if there's no line, then your circle is going to be open.